Good afternoon. Get ready for Addicted to Real Estate Radio. I'm Phil Falcone with my co-host Jeremy Ricci and Larry Steinhouse. Phil, Phil, I'm tired of this. I don't want to be a co-host. You and I and all three of us at the same level. Stop it already. Stop calling us co-hosts. Stop treating us like inferior people. And get to the show and make the show good. This is horrible, Phil. I hate this show. Every week you do the same thing. You sit here and you make us sound less than you are. We're as smart as you are. Don't you forget it. Okay, but if your lazy butt would actually help write the script, you could have had this thing corrected a long time ago. Now back to what I was doing. What, do you, what about you, Jeremy? Don't you think he's like he just takes over the whole show? This is ridiculous. I'm just over here laughing at you guys. <laughs> All right. Larry Steinhouse. That was Larry and my co-host Jeremy Ricci here on WWDB 860 AM every Thursday from 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock. If you want to ask us a question or you have a real estate need, give us a call at 267 988 2000. Hey, Larry, tell us who Addicted to Real Estate is. You know what Addicted to Real Estate is, Phil? It's you. It's all about you, and it's always about you. And I'm tired of it being about you. Wait, wait a minute. That wasn't the question you asked me, was it? No, no. We are, we, are, we are home buyers. What we do is we invest in real estate. We are full-time real estate investors. I was just having some fun with Phil if you guys haven't figured that out. We're, we're full-time real estate investors, and we are also real estate agents. We own a real estate agency called Addicted to Real Estate. And we cater to investors where other real estate agents may not know how to invest in real estate. We do it. We do it full time. And we can help others invest in real estate. We also do investor and realtor education meetings every month. When is the next one, Phil? I'm sorry. I, I don't remember off the top of my head. We don't have a schedule We don't have a schedule. I'm sorry. And they can go to addictedtorealestate.com with the number two, addicted, the number two, to realestate.com. And they can find out when the next one really is. If you put your name and email address in the website, you'll get all the invitations. You get invitations to buy some real estate deals, invitations to our meetings, invitations to uh, be addicted to real estate yourself. So, Invitations are good. Subpoenas are bad, but invitations are good. <laughs> <That's> a, <laughs> How many subpoenas did you get this weekend? Uh, I got one for you, but I haven't given it to you yet. I was going to do it on the air. I thought it would be funnier that way. Is it a restraining order after what I just said? <laughs> well, you'll find out in the segment, too, so stick around. It's going to be entertaining. So, what do you guys want to talk about today? I have to tell you about this house I went to see this weekend. The house was nothing, but the woman, I opened the door, and I'm telling you, the woman was in a robe. And she's like, let me, let me show you this house. And she just kept slowly untake, taking this robe off. And it was very strange. I got a little uncomfortable, especially after she took the robe off. And I said, you know what, I don't think I really want to buy this house. I had to go. It was bad, Phil. You ever have an experience like that? Unfortunately, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you would have I'm seen still, what I'm this woman I'm waiting for the punchline like, here. There was no punchline. This is a true story, Jeremy. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it was bad. Yeah, and she had a rack. It was unbelievable. <laughs> Let's get on Like with a gun rack? <laughs> <clears throat> no, she was a deer hunter on the wall. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, that's horrible. So... We have some questions, as always, that are emailed in. And if you want your questions answered, you can send them to phil at addictedtorealestate.com. Send it to phil at a2re.com. That's a shorter one for you. Yeah, right I like that there. one better. a2re.com. Phil at a2re.com. It's like an abbreviation. So. Is that F-I-L? <laughs> P-H-I-L. Yes, P-H-I-L. Pretty hot and illiquid. <laughs> so, What are our questions today? So why is there no education in high school for real estate? The, uh, the next question, what's the biggest mistake you can make in real estate? Doing this show. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no. Why do all gurus have photos taken in front of mansions acting like they're rich and holding a pile of cash? That's pretty funny. I like, I like that. that. That's yeah, funny. yeah. Uh, I don't, I've never done that, but uh, I'm certainly and capable of answering that question. Yeah, we got some people that are good at Photoshop. We can Photoshop it in. And, uh, and the main topic, why do private lenders lend on real estate? all the other investment choices out there, why pick real estate? That's We've got an app for that. We've got answers for that one. And lastly, health before wealth. We have a, I think we have a surprise for you guys. This is um, a voicemail that Phil got that is hilarious. Um, I've only heard little bits and pieces of it. We're going to hear the whole thing on the show later on. Yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about angry people. And how angry that, people? What do you mean angry people? And how that can be uh, detrimental to your health. 
So stick around as we discuss these interesting topics and much more. You're listening to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. We'll be right back. As a real estate agent, you know that most people buy a house once every seven years. Imagine working with clients that buy seven houses every year. At Addicted to Real Estate, they teach you how to work with investors because they are investors. Located in Montgomeryville, Hatboro, and Huntington Valley, work at an agency built for investors, buy investors, and finally learn how to invest yourself. Addicted to Real Estate Agency. Call them now, 215-321-SELL. 215-321-SELL. Hi, my name is Phil Falcone. I wrote a book called Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And if you'd love to see an investment book written by a Philadelphian about investing in Philadelphia, I'm your man. You can check out my book at addictedtorealestate.com with the number two. I have a free web TV show there. I have free investment forms for real estate investors. And I have my book that you can check out, Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And the website is addictedtorealestate with the number two dot com. Hi, I'm Larry Steinhaus, and I'm addicted to real estate. Are you a real estate investor? Do you know the value of having a real estate license? It's awesome. You get to make even more money and get exposed to deals you probably would have missed. Well, today is your lucky day. I will pay for your real estate license. Find out more by calling me at 215-378-9190. That's right. I will pay for your license. Call now, 215-378-9190. Addicted to real estate, bridging the gap between investors and realtors. 215-378-9190. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. Do you have a voicemail machine answering your business calls during the day? Oh, please tell me it's not true. I have an answering service for you that only costs $99 a month. We're real humans. That's right. We have live humans answering the phone in the name of your company and patching the calls to you for only $99 a month. And there are no contracts, so you can try it out anytime you like and cancel it whenever you like. Executech Suites, 215-942-7600. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. I got a question for you. What do you get for $4.95 a month at Executech Suites? You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone number. You get the fax number. You get the internet. You get two full-time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you, whether you're in the office, in your car, or at home sleeping on a couch. You get the conference rooms, you get the mailboxes, you get the printer, the copy, the scanner, you get the janitorial service, the utilities, and free coffee. I know it's hard to believe that you could get all those things for $495 a month, but it's true. 67 Buck Road in Huntington Valley, Executech Suites. Give us a call, 215-942-7701, 215-942-7701. Welcome back, everybody, to Addicted to Real Estate. I got this, I got this. You guys fighting again? Again, again, they're fighting again. Here we go again. Jeremy's splashing over Phil. Phil's splashing over Jeremy. Go ahead, Jeremy. You're supposed to do this. (laughs) Welcome back to the show, everyone. And we have questions, and this is the segment that I usually cover. So before we get into the questions that people wrote in, I have a question. Phil, when you talk about Executech Suites, you're talking about all the things you get when you get an office at Executech. And one of the things is free coffee. And I had always wondered why people pay so much at these, like, you know, Starbucks and all these things for coffee. As a landlord, you need to know the places that you can get free coffee. Executech Suites is one of them. Larry, Phil, any other places that you can think of where you can get free coffee? So, like, I, yeah, I go to hotel rooms in the morning. Hotel. I mean, no, not rooms, but hotels. You go in the lobby, and right. a lot of times they have free coffee in the right. lobby, and I get a free cup of coffee there. You got any, Phil? Well, I told my little brother, you know, he goes to Starbucks three times a day, five bucks a pop. I told him if you do the math, thirty days a month, that's four hundred fifty bucks. I rent offices for four ninety five a month. Hell, man, that's you awesome. Get, you're wasting, <laughs> that is pretty funny. You're that's wasting all this yeah. money at Starbucks. You could rent an office, get two receptionists to answer your phone, and a whole lot of other wonderful things, and and uh, and all the coffee you'd want to drink. Is this your your brother Matt? Yeah, my little brother Matt. So, he drinks a lot of coffee. So he, even if he does have a business, but even if he didn't have a business, how cool would it be to just get somebody to say, Matt Falcone? Can I forward you to Mr. Falco? You know, yeah. the, the receptionist uh, having a personal every, reception. I also notice every time I go to visit somebody to look at their house to buy it, they always offer me a free cup of coffee. There you go. How about this? Emergency rooms. Oh, yeah. You can go to the emergency room and get a free cup of coffee. There you go. I'm Where else? You can get really good coffee if you go to a car dealership in the waiting room in the lobby 
when people are waiting to get their car fixed. It's another place where landlords can get, you know, I'm just saying landlords because we tend to be thrifty. So you're so, saying I've had too much coffee this morning, Jeremy, and that's why I'm I don't know. Something's going on on today's show because you guys are all lively. <laughs> I'm the only one here with a cup of coffee, so I don't know. Well, all get right. back to the questions and do your job. Okay. So why is there no education in high school for real estate? Uh, when you're in high school, all you generally hear is college, 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 college. And there's nothing wrong with that, but maybe there's something wrong with that. Larry can tell you what he thinks of it. But, uh, you know, the, the teachers in college are all college educated, that they've they've – grown up with this mentality, I assume, that you must go to college in order to be successful in life. And and yet real estate, which is something that every human on earth is going to own it, most likely multiple houses, even if you weren't an investor, just the ones you live in alone. You'll probably have three or four of them throughout your life. Pretty important topic. Never gets covered in high school whatsoever. How about stocks? Not that I'm a stock guy, but do you think that might come up once or twice in life? I had you know, I had to come up in seventh grade. We did a, a test test trial. We had ten thousand dollars and we got to invest it. But this was like a little bit of a I don't know. It was like an advanced placement sort of class. But we did a little test drive on stocks. We never did anything with real estate though. I don't know why. Yeah, they don't teach checkbooks. They don't teach basic finances. You know, they they barely teach you that four quarters make us a dollar. I talk I talked to somebody about starting a course, just maybe like a little assembly even, called the Home Economics They Don't Teach You at Home Economics. And literally teaching people about home economics and home being real estate as well, but but everything from you know personal finance to how about credit? Do you think credit's something they should teach? How to manage your credit? Yeah. No, absolutely not. Because they should just this, this is the problem. And, yeah. and what Phil was saying about, about college, this, this is the this college loans are the biggest scam on the planet. I know I'm going into a, a slight tangent, but imagine taking a mortgage out on your house and you know and you default on your mortgage. But the mortgage says that we will you have to pay this mortgage for the rest of your life, no matter what happens in any way you ever go and anywhere you ever work. We're going to take money from your check to pay that mortgage if you if you default on this mortgage. How many mortgages would you actually take? Probably none. And that's what a college loan is. It drives me nuts. That is it true that you can't even wipe one out like with a bankruptcy you or something? You can't wipe one out with a bankruptcy. You can never, yeah. ever get rid of it. And, and, and you know, we got people who, who you know, they get they get in a lot of trouble. We, we, we've seen them when we buy in their houses. Yeah. They're in trouble because of their college loans. Yeah, I don't even know if this is true, but I recently heard that the only sector of the United States government that actually makes money is a student loan program. That makes hmm. sense. My, uh, my well, they just took it over a couple of years ago. My son's just in the fourth grade, and we're doing these little portfolio reviews right before the parent-teacher conferences that are coming up. And these portfolio reviews, I'm reading through all the work he did, and there's a little – he had to summarize a story, and, and they, I guess the school prepared a story that he had to review and write a report of. And what, what was the story? Was it on anything that had to do with, uh, you know, personal finance? I'm not even saying, just a, a useful topic. You know what the topic was? Green energy. Oh, yeah, that's that's such a political it was, it, it statement, was, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> it was about it was about geothermal geothermal energy and how it's better than normal heat. Yeah, the I'm message. like, oh my gosh, it's in the fourth grade and they're already they're already teaching like. Uh, uh, if you guys have ever uh, read Robert Kiyosaki's book, Rich Dad Poor Dad, he sold about 20 million copies worldwide, so it's a very popular book. One of his biggest pet peeves is, is that there's no business education in this country, right? Nothing, right? Or, or if there is any, it's very, very, very little. And really, that's one of the things that we're all very passionate about, and we love to teach people about, you know, real estate, which is our, our favorite topic. And, you know, if you're interested in learning more about real estate investing and how to make money real estate investing, you need to come to one of our meetings we have one every month. Make sure you go to addictedtorealestate.com and put your name and email address in so that I can send you the invitation, the famous invitation to our next meeting. So let's move on to the next question. What's the biggest mistake you can make in real estate? I have to say not investing in real estate is probably the biggest mistake you can make in real estate. But I'm not quite sure that that's how the question was worded. <laughs> what do you think, Jeremy? Jeremy? I think that there's a, a couple big mistakes. One of them is um, I would say I'm going to go with the opposite, Larry. I'm going to go with buying the wrong property is worse than not buying the property. 
So not buying I'm I kind of agree that if you don't invest in real estate for for what this show is catered to, sure, that's a, a big mistake. Analysis paralysis. People that go through education over and over and over again and they never buy anything. But I think buying the wrong property and I have I have a couple examples of that. Oh yeah. I think <laughs> I had we had a property do, yeah. in Southwest Philly that I could write a whole book over. But um yeah, buying the property you shouldn't have bought is more dangerous than missing out on the deal that you should have bought, I, I would say. What do you well, think, I, Phil? I would think one of the biggest mistakes is signing your name to all that paperwork that a bank gives you, which essentially gives them the right to not only take the property in question, but just about anything else that they can and will take from you, provided that you defaulted on it. We One of the things that we focus on is certain entities that you can use, trust, to hold real estate, which helps you to isolate strictly the piece of property that you are buying. The lender can take that piece of property, but nothing else. And and that kind of um, investing knowledge is priceless to you if anything ever goes wrong. Well, I would say that there's another big mistake you can make in real estate. And um, for me, I didn't – I, I picked a wonderful woman in my life and my wife is awesome but i would say that there's half of the population gets divorced and that decision's always made in in real estate usually in churches i didn't get that you didn't get it biggest mistake you can make in real estate never mind <laughs> oh now i got it <laughs> Just, okay. it's okay people, people ask people ask me like oh do you like how did you get started in the business and i'll say well i started out in commercial real estate and then a few days later, they took me home to a piece of residential real estate. And it takes a, a couple minutes for people yeah. to get that. It Jeremy, a, you're, It was a hospital. and then again, Your yeah. intelligence is way over the average person. <laughs> and, and when you say it, it's hysterical, but you have to explain it. <laughs> it's, not, it's not funny if you have to explain the joke. Yeah, right. So, but there are a lot of common mistakes. You know, there's, there's, there's over-leveraging. There's buying the wrong property. There's, you know, there's, uh, there's dealing with the wrong people. There's actually marrying the wrong person, <laughs> which could be a problem in, in real estate investing. But, again, so so some of the biggest mistakes – and, actually, you know, we encourage people to talk to us. If they're in the middle of a deal and they want to, and they want to know if they're doing a good deal, have them call us. Phil, right. what, what's the phone number they can call you? 267-988-2000. And before we get off this question, you know, I don't know what the biggest mistake is I've ever made in life, but I know what the most recent one is. Doing this radio show with you two guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, the radio show isn't so bad. It's just some of the people who work here that have a problem. <laughs> oh, yeah. We got, we got a problem. Oh, look at that, too. <laughs> you should see, we, should, we got Brett in the, in the sound room. He's turning, he's turning red now. He can't wait, he can't wait to, to, to bash us. Me? me? Uh, you guys will get it soon. <laughs> Brett comes in and he it. tells us these awesome jokes, but we got to teach him yeah. timing. He, yeah. he, he runs right into the punchline and, you know. I thought you guys were quick thinkers. I don't know. So I thought you guys would go right with the punches. Yeah. Do we sound like quick thinkers? Have you heard our show? <laughs> hey, since we got you on the line, Brent, how much time do we have left in this segment? Because not, not one of us are timing. Hey, like he said, you run the show. You call the shots. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. All right, well, if I'm running the show, then we're going to get on to my favorite of all the questions today. Why do all you gurus have your photos taken in front of mansions acting like you're rich holding a pile of cash? That is pretty funny. It's like so iconic, you know, it, it is the really, Carlton really. Sheets or whatever. And they, you know, the, the neat thing is that you see them sitting in front of a jet and the assumption is that they own the jet or maybe they just walked out of the jet that they took a ride on or maybe they just posed with it and they never owned the jet. Um the cool thing about jets is they have tail numbers, and you could easily look up the tail number on the FFA's website and see who owns it. And usually it's not the guy in the picture. And, and that's why I don't take a picture in front of my jet, because I don't want anybody to know that I own it. No, I don't own a jet. You subscribe to Jet. <laughs> that's right. Jet. No, not, not, not the magazine. Jet.com, but that's yeah, another yeah. story. Free, so, free plug there, geez. Yeah, and, and, and I'm of the belief that you really have to lower your expenses and raise your income to be rich. And rich is met, means different things to different people. To me, rich is financial freedom. I like to have all the freedom I want and do anything I want whenever I want. Be able to do this radio show and make fun of Phil, it's fine. But I can't. But I can't do that if if my bills are too high and I'm trying to go out to work every day and make a living. It's all about cash flow. So live below your means. You know, usually what happens is people people expand their cash flow and then they expand their expenses along with it. Correct. And right. a lot of people die with no wealth because they're 
their paycheck, you know, whether it's an entrepreneurial paycheck or it's just a regular W-2 paycheck, as their income goes up, so do their expenses. Yeah, you mentioned the Rich Dad Poor Dad book, and that's a book that I'd recommend for everyone, and it talks about that. Don't spend your stuff on junk. I mean, don't spend your money on junk. Spend your money on investments that are going to make you money and lower your expenses. I mean, I lived in a huge house a couple of years ago, and even to just change one room floor, the flooring was $7,000. Mm-hmm. I just did, you know, I moved into a, a small th- three bedroom recently because it's just me now, and I did the whole floor upstairs, and it was $2,500. So it's a big difference on you know, what you're spending and, and how you're living. Because I live really nice, but I live in a small place. So, yeah. Our, when we had um, – my wife just criticized me for – we had a, a back porch. I had a nice, like, commercial carpet in there, and she criticized me for cutting that out and taking that carpeting and go putting it in a rental property so I can get it rented up. She goes, when are you going to replace our floor? You just took, cut it out and put it in a rental property. <laughs> um, that didn't happen. I was just, yeah, just I was hoping it didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> if you want yeah, to but I, for one, want to say that I have never had my picture taken in front of a mansion – acting like I'm rich, holding a pile of cash. But now that you mentioned it, I think it would be funny as hell to make a picture like that to go on this uh, YouTube version of this radio show. Which mansion you know, are we going to in front of? We got, you have to How like, about play, the Playboy Mansion? I could just take a picture. It's green we'll, screen. I'll green screen. We'll, it. Photoshop, we'll sh- Photoshop Trump's airplane, and we'll, we'll do a horrible version of Photoshop, and we'll put Falcone on the side of it, <laughs> take a picture. <laughs> and then put, like, uh, what was the what was the, the currency? <laughs> Like pesos or something and holding a pile of, oh, of, of, of a worthless yeah. amount of money. I, like I, I, I knew a guy who had a, uh, a cleaning business years ago, and uh, his name was Joe. And, w- you know, we were going to – we were trying to come up with a marketing strategy for him. We were going to call General Joe's Cleaning Service. He was going to wear like a, uh, a soldier's hat, right? He could say G.I. Joe. Right, and I told him to get a, uh, a banner um, that we could – paste on the side of one truck, right? And there was a Ford dealership on Roosevelt Boulevard that had like 20 of these trucks all in a line. And I said, well, just put your banner on the side of one truck. I'll take your picture. Ba-boom, you know? I just put it on the side of any any truck. Yeah, but I make it look like you got 25 trucks, you know? That's just a truck and a lot for sale. Right. (laughs) I can assure you that the pictures that I put up on our YouTube videos are the real pictures of our Hotboro Stewart. Our, our trucks that are wrapped with I buy houses. My new Beamer, which yeah, is wrapped. Yeah, he says that. That's funny. With, which is look at me, with look at me in my Beamer. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Really? And then he wraps it, which probably I've, I've heard a couple people are like, I can't believe you wrapped that thing. I'm like, yeah. hey, why not? I had one guy write on Facebook, you ruined it, dude. You ruined it. Dude, I think it looks better with the wrap than it looks without it. It looks really nice yeah. the way the coves are set it's up. It's a sticker, man. Some people use You're racing listening, stripes. You're buddy. It's a sticker. It comes off, you know. <laughs> all right, let's move on, okay? All right, all right. Stick around as we're going to discuss why do private lenders loan to real estate investors. That's a very interesting topic that you want to learn about. You're listening to Addicted to Real Estate Radio, and we'll be right back. Hi, my name's Phil Falcone. I wrote a book called Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And if you'd love to see an investment book written by a Philadelphian about investing in Philadelphia, I'm your man. You can check out my book at addictedtorealestate.com with the number two. I have a free web TV show there. I have free investment forms for real estate investors. And I have my book that you can check out, Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And the website is addictedtorealestate with the number two dot com. As a real estate agent, you know that most people buy a house once every seven years. Imagine working with clients that buy seven houses every year. At Addicted to Real Estate, they teach you how to work with investors because they are investors. Located in Montgomeryville, Hatboro, and Huntington Valley, work at an agency built for investors, buy investors, and finally learn how to invest yourself. Addicted to Real Estate Agency. Call them now, 215-321-SELL. 215-321-SELL. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. Do you have a voicemail machine answering your business calls during the day? Oh, please tell me it's not true. I have an answering service for you that only costs $99 a month. We're real humans. That's right. We have live humans answering the phone in the name of your company and patching the calls to you for only $99 a month. And there are no contracts, so you can try it out anytime you like and cancel it whenever you like. Executech Suites, 215-942-7701. 
Hi, I'm Larry Steiners, and I'm addicted to real estate. Have you been thinking about getting your real estate license? Well, have I got news for you. We are currently training new agents to be addicted to real estate. If you are tired of your day-to-day, paycheck-to-paycheck life, I will pay for your real estate school and your license. Become addicted to real estate on me. Hurry before we change our minds. Call me at 215-378-9190. That's 215-378-9190. Call now, 215-378-9190. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. I got a question for you. What do you get for four ninety five a month at Executech Suites? You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone number. You get the fax number. You get the internet. You get two full time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you, whether you're in the office, in your car, or at home sleeping on a couch. You get the conference rooms, you get the mailboxes, you get the printer, the copy, the scanner, you get the janitorial service, the utilities, and free coffee. I know it's hard to believe that you could get all those things for $495 a month, but it's true. 67 Buck Road in Huntington Valley, Executech Suites. Give us a call, 215-942-7701. Welcome back to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. So this afternoon, we're going to be talking about why private lenders lend on real estate. What do you guys think? Well, let's talk about the alternatives, I guess. I have a lot of uh, private investors that I've talked to that are investing in the stock market. And frankly, they don't like the roller coaster ride. Yeah, it's scary. Yeah. And and there's also there's people that, you know, another alternative is um, CDs. People put their money in CDs. What are CD rates right now? CD uh, rates are like 0.2 percent, something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think right? I think they're per- actually closer to one percent. Oh, one percent? Yeah. Whoa, that's yeah. the accelerated version. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. But you have to lock up your money for three years. Well, at one percent, I, I can't believe that the banks actually take up all the room on the wall to advertise the CD rates <laughs> as low as they are. It's not really a, a good advertisement. They should put. They should put the interest rates. Yeah. On I don't the even loans. know why people use CDs anymore. I just use my iPod. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> well, you know, when you go into a bank, right? What do they have? They have those lollipops at the bank, right? And and you know what brand lollipops they have, right? What kind? Dum Dums. Got it. You ever notice that? For real. Go in there. Next time you go into a bank, pick up the lollipops and it says Dum Dums because they're pretty much telling you that if you put your money in this bank, you are a lollipop. That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> All right, so yeah, I think I think that it's an alternative where you're investing in something that has intrinsic value. First of all, um, I always say to people, real estate can never go to zero, even if real estate a stock. What kind of stock do? Surely a stock could go to zero. Absolutely, sure. The company goes out of business. What do you have left? Nothing, right? So real estate can never go to zero, even if a meteorite lands on your house. The land is still worth something. Mm-hmm. Frankly, the meteorite would be worth a lot too, but yeah. but, but the, the land for sure, it, you can never go to zero. Now I'm, I'm going to put that in my next private lending document. What's that? Say if a meteorite lands in the, on on the property, even if a meteorite lands, you don't get you. I get exclusive rights to it. You don't to the meteorite to, no, to, to the lender. Yeah, right. <laughs> so yeah, so I think that's one. That's one. You know, it can never go to zero. And um, when just like we buy real estate, when we buy equity at a discount, a private lender typically lends only a percentage of the value of the property. So let's say it's 75%. They have 25% equity cushion above their loan. That gives some room in case the market, you know, let's say they were worst case scenario, they would have to foreclose on a house. At 75 cents on the dollar, could they still fire sale it and get their money out? And, and you know, so that's that's one reason. If um, I don't think you can do stock, you can't buy stock at a discount, can you? Well, you can in options, but that's a whole, that's a whole different, yeah, it's a whole different way to do to do stocks however but 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 borrowing money on on real estate investments you know it's the same thing you know you you really just have to and you know people come to me all the time so how do you find private lenders uh, you know you talk to people you talk to your, your 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 relatives your friends people who you know but more importantly you have to have the right deal and you know we go through this all the time if you don't have the right deal there's no reason to even buy the deal and the private lenders probably know that but if you have the greatest deal ever the private lenders are literally throwing money at you, and we've had this we've had this discussion with people who come to some of our meetings. They're like, how do I find private money? I'm like, find the deal, and I can find you all the private money you, you need. Yeah, so it's really if the deal, let the deal come first, and then the private money. So 
we had uh, somebody in the office that was making a, an offer on a house that was listed for sale, and that, that was a little bit different because it was a an MLS-listed property. So, of course, they want, like, proof of funds and all that stuff, whereas if we're buying directly from a homeowner, the homeowners don't particularly ask us for proof of funds, but we've never had an issue raising the funds um, as long as it's a good deal. So yeah, I think there, was a, there might have only been one building that we didn't raise the funds for, and it was like a $2.1 million building. And we were looking for just a single person that could that could do the loan. But that was, I think, that was the only deal that we didn't raise the money for. I don't even remember what deal you're talking about. You could tell me later. What about this paragraph here that you wrote down? What's that all about? Stockbrokers. Well, it looks like you know. Go ahead. It says stockbrokers ask for your money so that they, the experts, can invest it for you. So we're talking about how private lenders uh, pay a return, and um, and they. They, it's an investment for themselves. They're not actually, you know, the thing about stockbrokers is they're getting paid whether you make money or lose money. Don't they usually get a percentage? The portfolio managers get yeah, a percentage absolutely. of sure. the assets. Sure. So they, let's say it's one percent. They're getting one percent, whether it fails or or it's um, or it's you know successful. So I don't know. Um, I think real estate it's an asset based loan. Yes, you're certainly investing in the in the people because you want to know that the person on the other end of that has the wherewithal to make the transaction happen, but it's also an asset-based loan that you're lending less than the value of the asset that you have as collateral. So if you go in, let's say you go into a, um, a pawn shop, you know, think of it like that. You go into a pawn shop and you need to borrow money and you, you stick your uh, wife's diamond on the table and uh, the diamond's worth 10 grand. The guy says, I'll lend you 70 grand. And if you don't come back, the diamond's mine. You know, you have a strong incentive to make sure because if you were to default on that, you were to lose that equity that you had in the diamond. Yeah, you got sixty, you know, seventy cents on the dollar, but if you were to default, then then your the pawn shop guy gets the diamond. So I think there's a strong incentive. Uh, even sellers ask us about about the deal. They say, well, geez, what if what happens if the deal goes bad? Well, you know, it's kind of like us walking away from the equity that we negotiated for ourselves. Why in the world would we do that? It's like going to go into work. Monday through Thursday and not showing up for a paycheck on Friday, you know, so. It's a much simpler, more honorable, straight-up transaction, if you ask me, okay? You, you give a, you got a couple hundred thousand dollars you give to a stockbroker. I mean, he's going to make his point on it no matter what happens. Um, he's He doesn't own the stocks. You do. He's merely managing it for you and receiving a little piece of the pie for doing that. Now, you take that same situation if a, if a private lender gives a couple hundred grand to some real estate investor. The real estate investor owns the house. The private investor has the note and mortgage secured against the house. It's a much simpler, straight-up relationship. Now, the investor owns the house, so of course he's going to take care of it. It'd be harming himself quite badly if he doesn't properly take care of the house and if he doesn't properly rent it and fix it up and pay his lender every month. So if, if you think about it, I, I don't know about you, I'd be much more comfortable being, because of my understanding of real estate, I'd be much more comfortable being a private lender on a piece of real estate with a talented, experienced real estate investor. Well, even if you're not a real estate investor, I think most people can understand houses. You know, we mostly buy single-family houses, and we advocate that other people buy single-family houses. And just think about it. If I'm lending money to somebody, even if I wasn't in the real estate business, it's a house. Most likely, the private investors live in one. They understand that transaction. Okay, there's a house, there's a mortgage, there's a lien against it. You can't sell it until you pay me back because I put a lien on the property. Um, I'm going to be, I'm going to ask you to give me a title insurance policy to make sure that my lien is in good standing. I'm going to ask you for a insurance, uh, additional insured on your hazard insurance policy, so that if the place burns down, the check comes to both of us, and you can't squander the money unless I sign and you sign it. Uh, then you make sure that the, the funds are applied appropriately. So there's a lot of security measures that can be put in place if you're a private investor and, and lending to a real estate investor. And I think that's that's one thing that's important. And it's just simple transaction. It's bricks and mortar. I mean, it's that's my – oh, that house over there, that's my collateral. I have a lien against that house. And it's it's very simple than saying, well, what does that business do and who are the management, you know, who are the CEOs and – you know, Phil, you often talked about what can you do if you own stock to improve that stock, and there's not really much say that you have as a shareholder. That's not true at all, Jeremy. You can write a letter to the board of directors wishing <laughs> them well. 
Well, sure, sure. They're going to read that letter, and they're going to feel really great after reading it, and they're probably going to go out and make a bunch more money. That works, you know. Yeah. So, what happens if the if the if the company goes out of business? You really don't don't have, you know, you can't really do too much as a shareholder if the company goes out of business. But if let's say a real estate investor were to go out of business, you know, you then can swoop in and take the real estate that you have a lien against, and arguably, if you lent the right proportion amount amount of money, less than its value, seventy percent, let's say, or whatever it may be, then the equity that they negotiated, or the they money that they put down, or whatever it may be. You get to um, you get to swoop in and, and and get that equity, and even if you had to pay an attorney and pay a real estate agent a commission to sell the place, you're still you know those investors can come out okay. And if you're a, if you're a private lender and you want to lend money to someone, look, real estate is basic math. It's real simple. You know, if if you if you are lending someone, let's say a hundred thousand dollars on a property, don't lend them a hundred thousand dollars on a property that's worth eighty thousand dollars. Lend them $100,000 on a property that's worth at least one hundred and twenty, hundred and thirty, dollars or one hundred and forty thousand dollars That's the first basic math. The second one is what is the person doing the property? If they're going to rent it, if it's a long-term, long-term lending, and they're going to rent it, and they have to give you $800 a month, if they're not getting at least $1,000 or $1,200 a month rent on that property, again, you know it's a bad investment. Why would someone come to you to borrow private money and then have a negative cash flow? If they have a negative cash flow, you might want to say, you know, maybe this isn't the investment for me. Or if they could justify that negative cash flow and prove that they're going to pay that negative cash flow, that's fine. But don't, I, I wouldn't do it. I, I would, I would caution against it. Yeah. I know a great way where you can make sure that you never buy a property that's a bad deal, and that's work with a agent who hangs his license at an agency called Addicted to Real Estate, where it is owned and operated by real estate investors and train our agents to make sure that they can tell the difference between a good deal and a bad deal. Yeah, and you can call you can call myself, you can call Phil. Um, uh, and, you know, what's it, 267-968-2000, two, call Phil. 267-988-2000. 988-2000, <laughs> And you can call Phil and we can get together and we can talk about that as well. It's really a cash flow game. I mean, there's, as a lot of people that want to invest in real estate don't like the headaches of being a landlord, let's say, or owning a piece of real estate or, or handling repairs. So I talk to a lot of people that want to get out of that business, even retiring landlords, for instance, that want to get out of the management side of the business and just get into something more passive. And they tend to convert to private lending because private lending gives you the benefits of real estate, but without without the hassle. So that's, that's what a lot of people that I talk to say that they enjoy the, the the passiveness of that investment because it gives them the cash flow without the headaches. Yeah, it's a, it's a great thing to be investing in. So, uh, guys, don't forget to go to addictedtorealestate.com. Put your name and email address in. We want to send you to some of the uh, some of the meeting events that we have coming up soon. When we come back, we're going to talk about you know health before wealth. We're going to talk about some angry people that we've met over the last couple of weeks. We might even have an angry voicemail to play for you, so stick around. We're expecting to have a little fun on the next segment. You're listening to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. We'll be right back. As a real estate agent, you know that most people buy a house once every seven years. Imagine working with clients that buy seven houses every year. At Addicted to Real Estate, they teach you how to work with investors because they are investors. Located in Montgomeryville, Hatboro, and Huntington Valley, work at an agency built for investors, by investors, and finally learn how to invest yourself. Addicted to Real Estate Agency. Call them now, 215-321-SELL. 215-321-SELL. Hi, my name's Phil Falcone. I wrote a book called Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And if you'd love to see an investment book written by a Philadelphian about investing in Philadelphia, I'm your man. You can check out my book at addictedtorealestate.com with the number two. I have a free web TV show there. I have free investment forms for real estate investors. And I have my book that you can check out, Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And the website is addictedtorealestate with the number two dot com. 
Hi, I'm Larry Steinhaus, and I'm addicted to real estate. Are you a real estate investor? Do you know the value of having a real estate license? It's awesome. You get to make even more money and get exposed to deals you probably would have missed. Well, today is your lucky day. I will pay for your real estate license. Find out more by calling me at 215-378-9190. That's right. I will pay for your license. Call now, 215-378-9190. Addicted to real estate, bridging the gap between investors and realtors. 215-378-9190. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. Do you have a voicemail machine answering your business calls during the day? Oh, please tell me it's not true. I have an answering service for you that only costs $99 a month. We're real humans. That's right. We have live humans answering the phone in the name of your company and patching the calls to you for only $99 a month. And there are no contracts, so you can try it out anytime you like and cancel it whenever you like. Executech Suites, 215 942 I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. I got a question for you. What do you get for $4.95 a month at Executech Suites? You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone number. You get the fax number. You get the internet. You get two full time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you, whether you're in the office, in your car, or at home sleeping on a couch. You get the conference rooms, you get the mailboxes, you get the printer, the copy, the scanner, you get the janitorial service, the utilities, and free coffee. I know it's hard to believe that you could get all those things for $495 a month, but it's true. 67 Buck Road in Huntington Valley, Executech Suites. Give us a call, 215-942-7701, 215-942-7701. Welcome back, everybody, to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. And on this segment, we're going to talk about health before wealth. Phil's got a couple funny stories for us. And uh, and an irate voicemail. So that's that's the topic for today. So, Phil, what... You're, you're actually, you're into health, so tell us a little bit about that. I will. I, I certainly think that you should put health before your wealth. I think most people today just go around and focus on trying to make money and, and run around like little gerbils in a spinning wheel, making money, making money, making money, making money. They can't get to the gym. They can't do a million things that are uh, relative to their health, such as eating right. And, and, and it's Speaking ridiculous. of gerbils, Phil actually grows his own grass. He needs it, really. Well, gerbils don't eat grass. I, I'm also trying to figure out what the connection is, and, and I was and I was really car- furious to see where you were going to go. He with has that. like a little little garden that he, he clips you know, scissors, he clips it off, and he eats it right. That's right. a bonsai tree. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, uh, I try to live by the book. It's called uh, "Heal Yourself 101" by Marcus Rothkrantz, and it's an amazing book that you know can really help you with with the health and losing weight and and eating better and a whole lot of other things like stress. Speaking of stress, let me tell you a story that happened this weekend. Jeremy and I bought this house about four years ago, and uh, it's in Doylestown. And the place is, uh, is, it's a complete wreck from head to toe. I mean, I don't know how else to say it, okay? The place is wasted. This location is awesome. Right. The location is amazing. And look, in Doylestown, like, you know, typically most houses are $300,000 and more. And um, we ended up buying this house about four years ago for like eighty nine thousand dollars. Seventy five grand. Seventy five grand. Is that what yeah. it was? It's crazy, crazy numbers. And uh, so th- there was these tenants living in the house when we bought it that had been there for like sixteen years, and and they're still there today, four years later. So they've been there like twenty years, and they pay the rent. I mean, we we bumped their rent big time when we when we bought the house because the rent was way under market value, but they've continued to pay the rent for twenty years now. So you can't blame us for keeping the house. Yes, the house is trashed. And um, if the tenants called and complained about a whole lot of stuff, um, it's pretty difficult to do major renovations to a house when there's a tenant living in it. So um, one of the things that we, we do is we typically don't do major renovations when a tenant's living in the house. But if they were to leave, that's the point where we would fix up the house. And this house is in need of a total rehab at the point that these tenants Ever leave. Anyway, I decided to um, put the house up for sale and figure, you know, basically Jeremy and I were going to flip the house ourselves if these tenants ever leave. But if they don't leave, we figured, hey, we could just sell the house now for approximately half the profit. So here's how our minds work. Let's just say that we can make $100,000 off of doing a flip. A flip is a lot of work. You've got to hire a contractor. You've got to raise the money. You've got to go through all the baloney with the paperwork and everything else. So what we typically do is we'll wholesale a house out 
for approximately half of what we can make off the flip. So if we can make 100 grand off of a flip, we're happy to make $50,000 for doing nothing. So that's kind of the mentality that we have. So I put the house up for sale on the MLS for 200 grand. The and cheapest thing in Doylestown. There's yeah, nothing There's, there's nothing no, cheaper. Anymore. Nothing even close to it in Doylestown, right? Now, it is a twin, and the house next door to it isn't so nice. So, you know, if you fix this thing up really nice, it's still a twin. That's kind of a, a bad thing about the house. But the great thing about the house is the location. Tons of twins in Doylestown. There's yeah. tons of it. There's, yeah. You know, even, even the townhouses and all that stuff is primo prices. Yeah. So. But, but the... But the uh, the place where you want to hang out in Doylestown, all the bars, all the great restaurants, everything, you're right there, man. Right. You walk like two blocks. I mean, the police station's right down the block. So you want to talk about a safe neighborhood. If you get convicted as a criminal, the courthouse is right there, too, so it's easy. Yeah, and your family will be able to visit you with, without <laughs> even getting in the car, okay? So anyway, when these realtors call me up and they ask me, tell me about the house, I always tell them, you know, just be careful. You know, this house is totally wasted. It, don't bring people there who are doing their first flip. It's way above them. Okay, they bring experienced people who can handle doing a flip. Yeah, I don't and, remember it being that bad. I mean, I've only been in the place like once or yeah, twice. Yeah, I think but. you were there like once about four years ago when we bought it. So what do you know? I'm the one that manages the properties, <laughs> right? So uh, I'm telling all these agents like that this house is really bad. And when they, you know, they get this. If, you, if you're an agent, you understand this. You'll get an email that says. Tell us how the showing went. And some of them have written back, I can't believe people live in such a house. What an appalling house and everything. And I'm like, did they listen to anything that I said before they went to look at the house? I told them the house. What do you want me to do? The people are happy there. I mean, we bought it. It's not like I've only been in it twice myself for a grand total of about seven minutes. So anyway, this guy calls me up while I'm in Florida last week. Says he wants to see the house. So I give him my standard speech. I said, you know, listen... I said, make sure you understand that you're going in to look at a house. It's totally wasted. You're going to need to do a lot of work to this house. Do you have experience doing flips? He got real cocky with me. He's like, like I insulted him or something. So he was acting like the guy uh, had done dozens and dozens of flips and he knew everything. So I said, fine, fine. You're an experienced guy. I'll get you in to see the house. So when I get home from Florida, I, I give the guy the, uh, the ability to get into the house. I make an appointment. He calls me back and he says, uh, Who's the owner of this house? I said, well, you know, I happen to be the owner because at the time he just thought I was a listing agent. And he says, he says, well, I'll tell you what, I have an offer for you, and I'm listing this house for 200000 He goes, I'm going to give you fifteen grand." I said, I'm sorry, there must be something wrong with the, with the phone. Did was you talking say, about the car that was parked out front? <laughs> <laughs> I said, did you say fifteen grand?" And he goes, yeah, fifteen grand." I, and then he goes on this rant. You know, I can't believe that you would even think you could get two hundred grand for this house. Blah, 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 blah. And I was actually, like, enjoying it. So I said, you know, when he finally took a break to get a deep breath, I said, don't stop there. I mean, tell me what you're really thinking. He starts calling me a slumlord. You know, now what the heck do you want from me? I mean, I, the people are happy there. They pay the rent. The house is making money. I intend to fix it as soon as they leave. You know, just ridiculous stuff. The guy was so crazy on the phone. He was calling me slumlord a couple times, and then he hung up on me. Unfortunately, I didn't record his call. However, I did record some previous calls over the years that I saved because I thought they were so comical. Hey, Brett, why don't you uh, why don't you run that call of ours? My message is I've called twice now. I'm interested in a house you have in Red Hill, Pennsylvania, on Washington and Third Street. My phone number is my name is. You're actually interested in selling the house rather than just putting people through this. Maybe you should call me back. This is the second time I've called. So, uh, you know, if you're some kind of sales agent or whatever the hell you really are, maybe I should call somebody back. Uh, you can't sell a house if you don't want to show it. No wonder it's falling apart. No wonder you're not getting anywhere. So call me back. I'll repeat. I want to buy a house. Uh, you know, so do something. And if you actually want to buy a or sell a house, maybe you'll call me back instead of being a jerk. Thank you. What, what, what's up with that? I could barely tell what he was saying. <laughs> Were you playing it at a different speed or something? <laughs> uh, just disordered. it. You know, technology's still not up to it, I guess. Oh, man, we give you one job to do today. Now you're in big trouble. Okay. One job. I've been running the show. I've, that's like 10,000 jobs. I'm doing more jobs than Larry today. <laughs> well, everybody. Surprised he's still employed after his flip out today. 
Everybody does more jobs than Larry. If you knew him, you'd, you'd believe it. Well, I mean, you know, I thought that call was pretty funny. I, I had a hard time making out even what he was saying. But uh, the guy was so upset that he had called once. And then the second time, he gives me this big lecture about why I didn't call him back. Quite frankly, I'm pretty damn good at returning people's phone calls. So if I don't return your phone calls, you probably called the wrong number, you knucklehead. Okay, it wasn't me who made the mistake. But uh, the guy is just – people get so crazy over ridiculous things. You want to talk about health before wealth? Let's not get all upset about silly little things that really aren't that important. That house ended up sitting on the market across the street from this guy for six more months vacant. So we really didn't need to get so crazy about it. And I did call him back after he left me that ridiculous message. So, Being a Philly guy, and, uh, you know, and I know you're, you're in the suburbs of, of uh, Central Bucks now, but even this is northern, what, northern Bucks? Or, actually, Montgomery, Red Hill would be in Montgomery County. I whenever I get a deal, when, whenever I get a deal that's like up in a little bit out of Phil's range, he goes, "Where the hell's that? Red Hill? Where the heck is that?" <laughs> I don't know. I've never even heard of the place. <laughs> you want to buy something there? Yeah, he so. doesn't. Phil doesn't like any properties he can't see from his from his ivory tower in Happer. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that. It's just you know, I, I don't want to own. I, it's bad enough we own property. I own properties in Jersey, in Montgomery County, in Philadelphia County, in in Bucks County, in Florida. I mean, you know, Red Hill just somehow, I don't know, it doesn't sound like a hotbed of, of real estate activity to me, but it might be. Who knows? Well, anyway, look, you know, uh, I'm not perfect. I make mistakes from time to time. I mean, I, I think there's two reasons why I make mistakes in life. I've kind of really put my finger on this, thanks to the help of some therapist. You know? <laughs> when, uh, when I was a little kid... How to I'm make not... your therapist rich by Phil <laughs> When I was a little kid, I was driving in a car, and uh, my mom gave me one of those lifesavers, you know, and it got stuck in my throat, and, and everybody thought I was choking on it. I, it was stuck in my throat, but luckily for me, I was breathing through the little hole in the lifesaver, okay? So uh, they got me to the hospital. They x-rayed it. It absolutely was. It was lodged in my throat perfectly, and I'm breathing through this little hole. So I figure that, you know, any problems that whenever I make a mistake in life, if I forget to call a guy back or anything like that, it's generally related to, you know, I probably went about 15 minutes with a very small amount of oxygen back when I was around eight years old. And the fact that Phil still has that lifesaver lodged in his throat. <laughs> See, you can hear it. <laughs> well, the only other thing wrong. And I thought that voice, I thought that was his natural voice. Now, now we all know the real truth. It's the yeah. lifesaver. And there's one more thing that's wrong with me, you know. Uh, living right by the Delaware River when I was a kid, you know, water skiing and swimming in the Delaware River. I think I think the water may have done something to me, you know. And again, for those of you in the suburbs, when he says water, he means water. <laughs> How do you today's spell like picking on everybody. Yeah, today's picking on everybody. Dave. All right. Well, we got two segments today that have been developed. One of them is going to be the angry voicemail segment. So if you want to call and rant and rave to us, you could just call 267-988-2000. We'd love to hear it. We'll play your rant on the air. The other segment is going to be the pick on Brett segment, okay, because he certainly needs it. I mean, you guys can see that already with the first show. I can't believe that he actually played that audio and it was that bad. Yeah, we have to uh, you know, we sat. What did we do? We sat there for 15 freaking minutes before to prepare the audio and you couldn't even play it? Hey, it sent over. I'm, don't shoot the messenger. Shoot the computer. Hey, uh, anybody got a gun? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> don't answer that, guys. Don't answer that, guys. How much time do we got left on today's <laughs> show? We might be able to share some important info with you before we get off. Yeah, we've got about five minutes or so. So. Yeah, okay. Brett gives us the very high-tech hand signal with five minutes. <laughs> All right, so we got five minutes left on this show. Good thing we didn't have six. You'd have to use two hands. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 Phil, is this the last show? No. Why? Because I'm kind of feeling they're going to throw us off the air if we keep this up. It might be the last show for you, but it's not the last show for us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean I can have my Thursdays back? Larry's antics. <laughs> so let's talk about one of my favorite subjects, addicted to real estate. Phil Falcon. What do we do? <laughs> we buy houses. Well, that is his favorite subject. Do you guys have any houses for sale out there? Why don't you pick up the phone and call us right now? I'll answer the phone. 267-988-2000. You got a house for sale? We'll buy your house right on the air. That sounds like something That would be pretty cool, yeah. Right? We've had people walk into the office. I mean, that's that's one of the reasons we have these locations, that people walk into the office and say, 
I remember a lady holds her mortgage statement up and comes in and says, here, take over my payments. You know, and, and we get some pretty neat deals, interesting characters, too, that walk into the office. And the guy that owns the restaurant, we had a guy walk in that had a, had a coupon for his restaurant. He, he, he told us about his restaurant, and Phil says, oh, yeah, I got a 20% off coupon for your restaurant. He rips it out of Phil's hand and says, no, here, 15% off. <laughs> <laughs> he, he downgraded the coupon 5% just by walking in the store. That was pretty fun. Yeah, was but it, it, was, it was worth it just to watch him do that. It was worth the 5%. That was hilarious. Yeah, yeah, it was. So, I mean, um, our educational events are coming up in April. I don't know the dates just yet, but uh, if you sign up for addictedtorealestate.com, you'll get an invitation to our next meeting. I think we should move that around a little bit. We're, we've been doing them in Warminster, I think, uh, but if, since we haven't scheduled the next one, maybe we should look for, you know, you know where I Another really venue. want to go to? I want to go to Northeast Philly. Anybody out there know a good meeting location in Northeast Philly? That's where I'm from. I want to go home. I want to go the back Chinese where you can there, say right? Wooder, spelled W-O-O-D-E-R, yeah. and people know what the heck you're talking about. And drink the Schuylkill Punch, right? <laughs> that... Yeah. And if, also, if you're ever uh, in the neighborhood, if you're by the Hatboro, or if you were by Line Lexington, stop in. Look for me. I'm Larry Steinhouse. And, of course, you know, as, as always, I'm prepared to pay for your real estate license because we know it. And, you know, I'm telling you right now, if you're a real estate investor and you have your real estate license, you will absolutely be exposed to more deals. And not only that, you make a couple extra bucks. I mean, I, this was a great one, Phil. The, the other day I closed on a house. And I bought the house for $92,500. I paid, you know, after closing costs and all that, it was maybe $95,000 out of my pocket. I had a private lender lend me 100000 and I made a commission. And did you recruit the seller as a real estate agent? No, because on, the Larry. seller was a bank. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. I, I recruited the private lender as a real estate agent. Though. There you go. Okay. That's the, truth. the seller was a bank. So. <laughs> and that's the truth. So he's, he's going to be coming and joining our office soon. But it's going to be interesting how you know you make a commission. I got, I got extra money, made a commission. i got to put about 15000 into the home, and I'm going to be renting it. And, and the ARV is about one forty. But no money out of my pocket, and I got a commission. It was pretty awesome. So if you're a real estate investor, I mean, just, just the savings that you make alone on buying, if you're buying a house for yourself, the rebate, essentially, the commission that you get yeah. is a rebate to you that can help towards your closing costs. In fact, you could probably waive the waive the commission or uh, you know do something to affect the bottom line where you're you're saving money. Just in the money you save on on the commissions, it pays for the real estate license. Well, Larry's paying for the real estate license, but it pays – there's ongoing costs of it, and sure. just, just one deal pays probably for five years of ongoing costs of having your license with the office. The bottom line is is don't let the money required to go to school to be an agent keep you from being one. Call us at Addicted to Real Estate, 267-988-2000. So if you're interested in becoming a sponsor for this show or to be a guest on the show, give me a call and we can talk about it. And if you know a location, a good meeting location in northeast Philly – uh, shoot me an email to phil at a2re.com, phil at a2re.com, and let us know. We're coming to Northeast Philly for a couple of months for our next meeting in April. We'll be announcing that next week on our show. So I'm Jeremy Ricci. I want to thank everybody for listening to our show. You can tune in every Thursday at WWDB. It's 860 a.m., Thursdays at 3 o'clock. So Thursdays at 3 on WWDB. And I'm hoping I'll be back next week. I'm Larry Steinhouse. Take care, everybody. <laughs>